but we couldn't do in 10. We don't regret anything whatsoever. We would do it again. Chiki, chiki. Love an album but find there's always at least one song in it that's not up to the standard of the rest. This podcast is for you. Welcome to Trimming the Musical Fat. I'm Stephen Nicholson and thank you for joining me for the latest episode of Trimming the Classic. And the subject of today's episode is one of music's greatest debut albums, The Cheeky Girls' Party Time. My guest and I will pick a song from the album that we like the least. We'll also discuss the album as a whole and pick our favourite tracks from it. Time to introduce my guest. Welcome the very cheeky, cheeky Davey Mellon. How are you? Hello. Hello. I'm fine, thanks. Good. Uh, I'm sure you're delighted to be joining me this evening to talk about such, uh, well, what I know is a special album to you. Yeah, no, it's one of uh, one of my favourites from back in the day, definitely. Well, let's talk party time. So, party time is the debut album by Romanian singing duo sensations, the Cheeky Girls. The group found fame after winning the UK talent show Popstars Arrivals in 2002. The band released their debut album the same year, reaching number one in over 20 countries, including the UK and US. To date, the album has sold over 35 million copies, making it one of the greatest selling albums of all time. The most famous song from the album is their debut single, the classic feminist anthem, cheeky song touch my bum the band also scored a worldwide festive number one in 2003 with their christmas classic have a cheeky christmas reviews for the album were incredibly positive in her five star review for the guardian paula your leg said not everything here works but taken as a whole this is an album that will potentially redefine the dance music genre in his four-star review for Rolling Stone, Pat McGrine said it has a weird kind of energy full of brilliant experiments no other pop stars would try. The group sadly failed to replicate the success of their debut and tragically for all music lovers around the world parted ways to move into non-singing careers. Gabriella moved into politics eventually becoming captain regent of san marino and monica is currently working as a beautician at vanity beauty and tanning in sheffield england they're open from 9 30 a.m to 8 p.m so davy when did you first hear this classic they're all there what would you mean after the the was the pop stars are right what was it, Pop Stars Arrivals? That? That's the one, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, so uh, shortly after that, it came out after that. I mean, Pete Waterman, what a, what a find we're, we're putting them through to, as far as they got. They should have won it, in my opinion. But yeah, that, that album came came out in 2002, 23 at the time. It was pretty much the, the, the soundtrack to my party nights out with, with work. Um, they would always come back to my house, we would always bang that on and we'd be flipping our legs, he loved it. I remember I remember seeing a few photos of you, Davey, with your your cheeky girls t shirt. You seemed to that was seemed to be permanently on you. Yeah, well I do love the colour pink, so it was how could I how could I turn that one up when I, I seen it for sale in the Sainsbury's bargain basement. Ah, I can't beat it. I know for me I first heard it uh, on CD, I bought it on the day of release and thankfully for me i was on a, a long drive up to, to perth with work so i got to hear the whole album in its entirety in the car so i totally lucked out there and um, so when you first heard the, the album i suppose uh, thinking of, of of it um in this day and age what would you think of the album davy 
Yeah, well, it still stands the test of time. It's up there with the classics, like the came out a bit similar time, like the Prodigy. <laughs> um, you know, it's just one of one of those albums that you can't can't forget. Once you've heard it, you're you're hooked in. Um, a lot of people like Muse, bands like that at the time, but just nothing nothing compared to the the dance beats that are coming off this absolute banging album. Yeah, I mean, for me, it totally blew me away. Having watched them on Popstar's Arrival, so you knew these girls had talent, but boy, could they, they write and produce too. And I think it was the breadth style they encompassed into the songs, which I really don't think anyone had done before. They kind of pretty much created their own musical genre, uh, which was incredible. Um, and, and do you have a favourite song from the album, Davy? Yes, yeah, similar were a big influence on uh, Ed Sheeran as well. Um, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. and Adele. Yep, yeah, definitely. I think uh, she slimmed down uh, quite a lot after after listening to the, this album randomly one day. She she saw the admiration they got. She said, "Well, wow, that's my well, goal to be as good as him." Yeah, I mean, I, I did hear on the grapevine that her ultimate goal for weight loss is to to get down to the cheeky girl's uh, hot pants and that, and maybe go on tour wearing them, which would be some achievement. Remember uh, Kylie Minogue stole their style as well when she put That's her right. gold hub hot pants on. That's was, right. Uh, and, I, and I was about that, but um, I was, uh, the original and bass was the cheeky girls. That's right, and I, I believe they were a big influence on uh, in Rainbows, the Radiohead's album from 2007, I believe they took a lot from this uh, debut album uh, to work it into into the In Rainbows album, which is one of their best. So, nothing but a positive influence on the the really the wider music music world. Yeah, I think that In Rainbows was just like a a, a cheeky nod to their wow. um, the, the colours of their, their outfits that they used to wear at the time. Oh, a cheeky cheeky nod, Davy, if you will. So so yeah, so what you got a favourite song on that album? Yeah, I would my favourite song is um, Have a Cheeky Christmas. used to be playing it takes me back to my um, holiday in Romania uh, around about that time I was doing all the Christmas markets in Transylvania and you could hear that song banging out all the time and it just like reminds me of happier times yeah uh, but did you get anybody actually singing it live when you, you were out there or just gonna just play, uh, hearing it on the radio and such like in the Christmas market no, no, no. They were they were doing a special Christmas show. They were on tour with the the album at the time after they come oh, out. Nice. They were unbelievable how massive they were in uh, Romania as well, where they came from. They actually did like a, a gig at the castle in Transylvania, right? And it was a complete sellout. And oh. <laughs> did, did did you count how many people were there? Uh, oh, there was about. Uh, Whoa, was... Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> 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 um, and bear in mind it would have been December uh, I hope they were covered up a bit more than their usual attire otherwise they'd be catching their death well I think they had these uh, special um, like fans that blasted out heat on, so they could still uh, get down to their nitty gritties oh, so even, even on a technical show level they were pushing boundaries there's yeah, just no I think, end uh, I think, their yeah, talent it was one of the the greenest concerts at the time. I think it's been an inspiration for uh, Coldplay for their new tour coming up. Oh yeah, their carbon neutral tour. Yeah. So again, the cheeky girls led the way. Unbelievable. I mean, for me, um, when anyone asks what's my favourite um, song from from Cheeky Girls' debut, it's a tough one. Uh, and I was thinking maybe get the party on, but I'm gonna. S- actually go with an obvious ah, it's choice it's an absolute banger isn't it i mean you, you pop that on and you're pull going all over the place but um i'm going to go maybe with an obvious one which is a cheeky song touch my bum we are the cheeky girls we are the- 
It's just such a, a catchy tune with a killer chorus, and I think it's just married to great lyrics about female empowerment and male chauvinism. Uh, and also, I remember buying the, I, I think the single they put out two CDs. Uh, I remember CD one had a brilliant Christmas mix of it. Um, and I'll give you a fact about the song, David. Do you know it was voted the best pop record of all time in a Channel 4 poll in January 2004? I didn't know that because I watched that and I voted. Yeah. How many times? Uh, well, it was 10p a message at the time, so only twice. Ah, uh, your skin. I'd, I'd used up my five free texts that month. <laughs> well, at least you gave them two rather than one, in the manner of speaking. And uh, your least favourite track from the album? I tell you what, there's there's not many bad songs on it. To be fair, I mean, no. hooray, hooray, uh, Mickey Blue, Magic, Summer Fun, or oh, bangers. If I was pushed to to say one, it would have to be uh, "Take Your Shoes Off." Oh, controversial, um, controversial, David. a good song but it was actually a great um, song play, it was playing on the, the radio that uh, when my, my girlfriend like broke my heart and she told me that she would was dumping me um, for another guy at school and it turns out it was my best friend uh, Paul I couldn't, I couldn't believe it um, and that was playing on in the background as, as, as she told me she broke my heart and I just I not listen to that again. Ah, oh, that's a tragic. So she, she, she basically told you to to, to shoot. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> she told she told me to shoot. All right. Ah, oh, well, uh, a tragic story. But thank, thank, uh, thanks but for I, making light of that. Uh, my heart breaks. That's all. Any any time, any time. Um, it was very cheeky, cheeky of me. Um, yeah, but I mean, how can you leave off any song of this album? They're all great, but if you if you actually held me at gunpoint and waterboarded me at the same time um, and forced me to choose, I would say uh, salsa in the disco. Uh, Buenos dias, señor. Let's have a Havana. The soul of Cuba, El Vero, Havana. <laughs> as the cheeky girl should be advocating eating spicy food in clubs while dancing. There could be an accident, like salsa getting in someone's eye or someone slipping. Then there could be murder on the dance floor and Sophie Ellis Baxter does not want that. So I think we've got to err on the side of caution. And that's, I actually believe salsa in the disco, that was the reason why there was a parental advisory sticker put on the album cover. Do you remember that? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. 
a lot of controversy at the time. I remember, I think it got it for that, but also for the song Mickey Blue, where there was uh, copious amounts of swearing on it, which I know a lot of parents weren't happy with. I mean, was that something that upset you at the time? Um, it was kind of pushing the envelope because I didn't get a lot of uh, like, like warnings like that on songs. I think it kind of like kicked off the, the gangster rap period that came out mm-hmm. at that time with um, like Dr. Dre, Eminem. Yeah. I think that was for, then. Then, then all you knew was that the swearing was everywhere. But yeah, it's good on this. I think it went too far with all those other bands, but it, it kind of fits in this album. It did. I mean, and and I think for them, which I think surprised a lot of people when they were sampling Ice T's rock band Body Count um, within the within the song Spanola. I think I can never ever say it right. It's Spanola Dream. Uh, they were sampling Body Count in there, and uh, I won't say the full word, but F the Police, which was a bold choice. Coming in this evening, baby. No problem. And thanks to you for listening. Hooray, hooray! Time for us to take a cheeky holiday. Until next time, keep trimming. Oh, well, remember, Davy, what day are we putting this? Uh, 1st of April. April the 1st. Ah, that makes sense now. The Trimming the Musical Fat podcast is a Stephen and Paul Nicholson production. Like what you've heard, why not leave us a positive review via your podcast provider? Want to share your opinion on what has been discussed? Contact us via voicemail by going to anchor.fm forward slash ttmf forward slash message or tweet us at hashtag musical trimming or email us at trimmingthemusicfat at gmail.com. Keep up to date on the show by joining our Facebook group or visit our website www.trimmingmusicalfat.com to listen to all TTMF album supercuts. Check out show videos on our YouTube channel. Support the podcast financially by becoming a podcast patron and return receive TTMF exclusives such as the Trimming the Classic series. Visit Patreon, type in the podcast name and select a patron tier. The next episode of the podcast will be Bon Jovi's Keep the Faith album, and the next Patreon exclusive episode is U2's Actung Baby in Trimming the Classic. Uh, again, one of your favourite songs in the album? <laughs> <laughs> Tiki, tiki.